The myth of Atlantis has shown extraordinary tenacity over centuries for a tale originally recounted 2,300 years ago. A famous researcher, Graham Hancock, reveals the mysteries behind the fascinating lost city of Atlantis in a compelling investigation that contradicts traditional history. Where does he stand? And why did Graham Hancock want Atlantis to be hidden? Let's find out. The story of the birth of a vast, ancient civilization and its apocalyptic destruction, as originally told by Plato, has subsequently given rise to several interpretations. Atlantis, sometimes written off as a myth, has grabbed many people's imaginations, inspiring various expeditions and hypotheses to learn more about its elusive existence. Graham Hancock has become a significant figure among the eminent experts working to uncover the mysteries of Atlantis by offering convincing proof and provocative insights into this prehistoric culture. Hancock began his investigation into the fabled city of Atlantis by reading a wide range of ancient and historical sources. Hancock thoroughly researched the hints in Plato's dialogues, particularly in his writings Timaeus and Critias, the ancient Greek philosopher who first revealed Atlantis to the world. According to Plato, Atlantis was a highly developed civilization that flourished until suffering a cataclysmic collapse some 9,000 years before his own time. The geographical and geological data supporting Atlantis's existence is one of the main tenets of Hancock's study. He contends that the Azores, a collection of islands in the Atlantic Ocean, correspond extremely well with Plato's depiction of Atlantis as a large island beyond the Pillars of Hercules. These islands, located in the region Plato selected for Atlantis, exhibit traces of a former civilization, including submerged features that mimic man-made ones. On top of that, Hancock also investigates geological oddities in the area, including the Sargasso Sea and the underwater Rio Grande Rise, which he thinks may be relics of Atlantis. These geological features support the idea that a sophisticated civilization once flourished in the area, as does Plato's description of a fertile and abundant continent. He draws attention to the mysterious megalithic monuments discovered worldwide, including the pyramids of Giza, Stonehenge, and the prehistoric sites in Peru, and suggests that these structures may be linked to Atlantis. Hancock suggests that these megalithic structures have a common ancient knowledge and possible global civilizational network since they have comparable architectural and astronomical elements. Besides that, Hancock also looks at the intriguing case of the enigmatic underwater constructions found off the coast of Yanakuna, Japan. Scholars disagree on the origin of these underwater remains, which are made up of finely sculpted stone structures. Hancock claims these buildings have significant resemblances to the Atlantean architectural design, supporting the idea of a long-lost global empire. While including mythical and cultural tales from numerous civilizations in his studies, along with geological and archaeological facts, he examines the parallels between the many cultural flood stories and claims that they may be relics of the catastrophic catastrophe that destroyed Atlantis. Hancock contends that Atlantis was not an isolated civilization, but a part of a greater linked world that shared similar knowledge and experiences by linking these historical accounts. But why did Hancock want Atlantis to be hidden? Hancock concedes that his study only serves as a beginning point for future analysis and investigation, despite detractors' claims that the lack of concrete, indisputable data lessens the credibility of his beliefs. He emphasizes maintaining an open mind and considering different viewpoints to learn the truth about Atlantis. His insights about Atlantis have reignited interest in this antiquated culture and inspired researchers to re-examine the subject with fresh eyes. He offers a convincing case for the reality of Atlantis and its significant impact on human history by carefully analyzing historical sources, geological formations, and archaeological findings. However, one cannot help but wonder why is there a persistent veil of silence surrounding Atlantis? Is there a concerted effort to conceal its existence? And if so, what could be the reasons behind such a conspiracy? The fear of upsetting accepted historical narratives might be one reason for the secrecy surrounding Atlantis. Challenging traditional time frames and rewriting our knowledge of human history would be the finding of an advanced civilization that existed before known ancient cultures. This possibility shakes the foundations of many academic fields, making it difficult to accept fresh information or unconventional views. Still, it is impossible to disregard the political and financial interests included in maintaining the status quo.
Institutions like colleges and museums frequently rely on well-established historical narratives and current exhibitions to obtain financing and keep their influence. This delicate balance may be upset if Atlantis is discovered, forcing these organizations to reassess their goals and resources. Likewise, it is impossible to ignore Atlantis's geopolitical ramifications. According to Plato, Atlantis was a powerful kingdom with cutting-edge science and military strength. It becomes clear why certain forces would desire to keep Atlantis secret if such a civilization did exist and had access to information or artifacts that could bestow great power. The secrecy surrounding Atlantis may persist because of concerns about upending the current world order or the improper usage of antiquated technologies. A tremendous task is also posed by the sheer size of the archaeological project needed to find Atlantis. There are logistical and economic challenges associated with the location of Atlantis, whether it be at the bottom of the ocean or buried behind silt. Large-scale excavations need a lot of funding, cutting-edge technology, and international cooperation. The absence of a coordinated effort or money to investigate Atlantis may indicate that information is being purposefully withheld. Atlantis-related conspiracy theories have also become more popular, with many speculating on covert organizations or enigmatic personalities actively trying to keep Atlantis a secret. These hypotheses show the public's rising skepticism towards established authority and how they handle historical findings, even though they should be handled cautiously. The conspiracy of silence around Atlantis is clearly a complex interaction of scholarly, financial, geopolitical, and logistical issues in light of these concerns. The reason for this quiet is a combination of factors, including the need to preserve entrenched interests, the fear of upending established narratives, and the size of the work. According to Plato, the Atlanteans had access to advanced metallurgy techniques. They were said to have been able to create metal alloys with unique properties, such as a substance called orichalcum. This material was described as reddish gold, with properties similar to brass but with a higher density and more excellent durability. Some historians and archaeologists believe that orichalcum may have been a real metal used by ancient civilizations. However, no evidence suggests that the Atlanteans had any special knowledge of metallurgy beyond other ancient cultures. Another aspect of Atlantis technology often speculated about is the idea that the Atlanteans knew advanced mathematics and engineering. According to Plato, the city-state of Atlantis was built using concentric circles of water and land, which were connected by a series of canals. The buildings and structures in the city were described as being made of a combination of stone and metal. Some historians and archaeologists believe that the layout of other ancient cities, such as Babylon, may have inspired the concentric circles described by Plato. However, no concrete evidence supports the idea that the Atlanteans had any special knowledge of mathematics or engineering beyond that of other ancient cultures. Besides that, the most popular and controversial theory about the technology of Atlantis is the idea that the Atlanteans knew about electricity, flight, and even space travel. Some proponents of this theory suggest that the flying chariots described by Plato were advanced aircraft and that the Atlanteans could harness the power of the sun and the stars. The Atlanteans were a powerful and advanced civilization that existed around 9,000 years before his time. But who were these people and where did they come from? Plato's account of the Atlanteans describes them as noble and virtuous people descended from the god Poseidon. They were said to be a mighty maritime nation controlling a vast empire across the Atlantic Ocean to the shores of Europe and Africa. His description of the Atlanteans is rich in detail, and many scholars believe that he may have drawn inspiration from real-world cultures and societies. One popular theory suggests that the Atlanteans were based on the Minoan civilization, which flourished on the island of Crete from around 2600 to 1400 BCE. The Minoans were renowned for their navigational abilities, and their empire extended across the Aegean Sea to the Greek mainland and beyond. Some historians believe that the Minoans inspired Plato's account of the Atlanteans, as their civilization was at the height of its power and influence during the period in which Atlantis was said to have existed. Another theory suggests that the Atlanteans may have been based on the ancient Egyptians. Like the Atlanteans, the Egyptians were renowned for their advanced mathematics, astronomy, and architectural knowledge. They were also seafaring people with a vast empire that stretched across the Mediterranean and beyond. Some historians believe that Plato may have been influenced by his travels to Egypt, and that the Atlanteans may have been an idealized version of the ancient Egyptians.
It's crucial to remember that Atlantis' exploration goes on despite these difficulties. Researchers like Graham Hancock are persistent in their quest to learn the truth about Atlantis, as are a dedicated group of academics and fans. Hancock claims that Atlantis had sophisticated knowledge in fields like engineering, architecture, and navigation that was well beyond what was generally considered feasible at the time. If accurate, this puts the idea of human progress in question. Remember to subscribe to our channel for more information about the ancient world. His insights impact how we think about historical catastrophes and how they affect human society. He contends that Atlantis was destroyed by a cataclysmic occurrence, either a worldwide flood or a natural calamity. This mirrors flood myths and stories prevalent throughout the world's civilizations, suggesting a shared memory of a catastrophic incident that altered human history. People worldwide are still fascinated by this long-lost society and its enigmatic demise, and explanations are still needed. Click on the video links on your screens to access our other videos on a related subject to learn more about ancient Greece and Atlantis.